Hi, it's Faceless Tech. Uh, I've got a project. It's a kind of a two-in-one project. Ages ago, like probably a few years ago, uh, if you remember, I made this uh, USB um, USB iPhone charger cable that had a pulsing uh, micro LED uh, strip in it. And then from then I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to make a lanyard uh, into this one day. I'm like, here we are. A couple of years later, and coincidentally, I've actually used the same power cord cable, which is weird. Um, but what it was, was I had kind of started, uh, I always have it in the back of your mind, but I always wanted to make it really small, but I didn't really have a way of making it really small. That's until I found a really small LiPo, which was actually out of a single use, single use vape. It's a little tiny, uh, I think it's 350 milliamp hour battery which is really quite small, but also it powered the uh, strip for like seven hours, so I thought, this is absolutely perfect. So I also, at the time, I wanted to make a, um, the have you seen them, the uh, TP4056 um, charge boards that they've got. They can be had for really cheap. This is a strip of them. The USB-C charging, they've got uh, U, uh, LiPo protection on them as well, so you can discharge safely discharge the LiPo. Um, but the only thing is, they didn't have, um, you can't charge them with like a USB-C PD charger, which is annoying. I did, someone has come up with like a little flex board that you can add in, which I have done, have used in the past, but I wanted to remake the whole board because I wanted to use it, um, be able to have it in custom shapes and stuff, and to kind of slightly change it. Because I didn't like the way that the LEDs are on the side here have changed. Basically, it's got the same layout, has the same chips, so you can basically buy one of these boards. I think they're like 40p, um, and then you can change all the parts over, including the USB-C. But I've added the uh, 5.1k resistors, and I put the two charge LEDs uh, either side of the um, USB-C charger. It's about the same size as one of these boards. Not quite, I might make another one in the in the future that is exactly pin compatible with it and size wise so you can just chuck it in a project. But I wanted the uh, charge LEDs behind the side because then you can easily have it sort of sticking out of the project and you can easily see through the wall of your 3D print it charging and stuff. So that was kind of like the first part of the project. Uh, well the second part really, the first part was getting the battery, the second part was making this. And then the third part was kind of making the cable, the power cord, which I have. Basically, it's a set of these lights, tiny little, I think they're just 0603 LEDs, um, sort of bridged across uh, to two pairs of like magnet enamel wire, which is quite cool. And there's just like a little epoxy blob on it, sort of protect it. You can only get like a meter of this for like a pound, it's very cheap. Um, so what I did was strip the power cord, meter power cord cable, strip that out, um, because it has like five strands in the middle. So I, I thought I'll put, add two strands back in just to give it a bit of extra strength because then you're not relying on the whole strength of the strip. Which is not bad because it's proper wire but you might as well just add extra bit and it'll kind of beef it out a bit because otherwise it'd be the thin the power cord, it'll like sort of pad it out a bit. Um, and then I thought what I normally do when I have a lanyard, in lanyards in the past power cord lanyards, is I've just tied a, uh, a knot in the end of the power cord and then kind of had it in the case and it stops coming out, but obviously I couldn't do that with this because of the LED strip and whatnot, and it would take up too much space. So I'll come up with like a little, uh, it's kind of like a washer, but instead of a hole in it, it's got like a little slit in it that goes halfway through it, so I can just basically just slide it on, glue it in place, and then I can have a little recess uh, in the top of the 3D print so that it will kind of like pull up against that. You can see this is one of my failed um, cases. But there's not a lot, hell, not a lot of room. You have basically the lipo down on the bottom here, and then I kind of taken advantage of the top, um, the sort of space either side of the uh, curve because it's a, obviously like a tube shape. So you've got this, there's like a two voids at the top. That's kind of where the cable comes in. Uh, I just slotted the cable in either side of there, and then the uh, charge board actually just like sits in the lid with the. Uh, the USB port at the bottom, so you can't really see it when it's when it's hanging off you. It just looks like a thing, and they've got a little switch at the side you can turn it on and off with. It doesn't do any blinking or anything like that fancy. I could, in the future, add maybe an 80 tiny 85, which is what I've got in 
uh, this cable, but obviously I'm just tight on space. So this is what I mean, I could make one of these charge boards with an 80 tiny, 85 in there, with a switch, everything pretty custom into that small space and it would all work then, which is why I kind of went about. I did go, I thought, oh, I'll do a reverse engineer it, look at the schematic, but luckily someone out there had already done all that for me, apart from they had uh, a different, they had one of the LiPo safety chips was a different chip. So I uh, re-added that into the uh, schematic. Didn't get this on the first go. I didn't realize the polarity on the chip had been swapped, which was a bit embarrassing, but you know, <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. I did some other uh, fit and finishes on there. I also changed the um, programmable resistor footprint because all these resistors are 0402, I think they are, which are kind of quite small. So I made the, uh, the programmable R3 resistor here because uh, this is the one that actually sets the uh, charge current. Because normally when you get a one of these boards, they uh, normally just dump an amp straight into your LiPo. So if you've got like a small LiPo uh, like this, it's no good. It's going to just fry it. Well, you know, over time. And it heats up the chip quite a lot. So I change it to, I think, a 3000 uh, ohm resistor. And that normally puts about um, uh, 0.4 of an amp, which is quite good. And it doesn't really heat up then. It takes obviously a lot longer to charge, but you're charging at a slower, safer rate. And especially if it's like right next to your LiPo, you don't want to um, obviously put unnecessary heat in there as well. So yeah, all in all, I was really quite pleased with this project, the way it came out. It did, it literally was like years in the making, but I'm quite, quite happy. It's not too big of a uh, size. It's not like unwieldy if you've seen it on someone. Um, and, and most of the time you're going to have it like out at night. Or you're going to be thinking you're not really going to even pay attention to this either. So yeah, as usual, the BM, I get it open source, the board files, the files for this, write a bit of a blog post, how to make the power cord and all that kind of good stuff. But you should be able to recreate it or use it for your own. So yeah, as usual, thanks for watching. Bye.